I love that you write about your nickname when you were a kid, <laughs> Sweet Jelly Muffin, yeah. and how you were this approval hunter, this rule follower, you were hellbent on being the perfect daughter. Mm -hmm. And I find it fascinating that that same girl is the one who is now really leading the charge, being so outspoken. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that your role would shift so dramatically? No, yeah, I never thought about my role shifting from the people-pleasing sweet jelly muffin to finding my voice and standing up for myself and other people mm -hmm. and kind of going from the golden child to the black sheep. Is that how you feel? Yeah, I, I, I feel like it's definitely <laughs> been that way. It's been a journey for us and um, looking back, I'm like, yeah, I would have never imagined that I would be where I am now and that's not where I wanted to be, I think, um, but it's what was said in front of me, you have to make a decision at some point. Are you going to, you know, cower to that or are you gonna like rise above it and just keep pressing on? And yeah. thankfully I have great support too. So. Yes. Yeah. Another tough topic in this book was reading about the police report leak. Your brother was being investigated for sexual abuse and as though the trauma of being a victim is not enough, it was made a million times worse when the world had to find out about it. What kind of a toll did that take on you? I think the world did not have to find out about it. What makes this thing that much worse is that this isn't something that, what makes it hard too is these are people who are antagonistic. These are people who don't view you um, the way that other people view you. They, you know, might have been your enemy up to that point. And people will say, well, you're public, so this is your fault. And Jill never chose that. That wasn't ever no. chosen. And I do hold, to some extent, I think, I don't know, we might feel differently about this, Jill and I, but like, I do feel that it was partly her parents' fault knowing what was going on and continuing on with the show the way that they did. Yeah. But the people that we hold responsible, as we've outlined in the book, for the release of Oh, it's absolutely, the yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you, I think it's, it's almost like they're complicit. Like, there were ba oh, bad actors, bad actors in the family, bad actors in the media, bad actors in city government, county government all created the perfect storm. My heart really goes out to you. I can't even imagine how challenging it must have, have been to recount all of that in your book. Do you remember a moment where you just kind of felt like, I cannot believe that my life has turned into this? Yeah, so I, again, I wanted to be, that was one subject in the book that I was very, very careful about mm -hmm. bringing up and not wanting to go delve deeper into it and um, because it is a very traumatic um, time in my life. This is something that nobody should have known about. Like, so that's right. the point. So that's why I don't like talking about, you know, continuing to talk about the th things that should never have been out there. Mm. But I, but I do want to advocate for victims and just again say how um, victims I, should I, never have to be put in the position that I was put in, and um, and it what what happened in my life. Um, and my story um, with these records being exposed um, was illegal. And so I was very clear in our book about um, in, in, talking about the yeah, judge's opinion yeah. and the judge siding with us yes. and saying, yeah, that what happened was illegal and should have never happened. And, and, and I talk to victims almost on a weekly basis and there are child advocacy centers, child safety centers, some version of that in every state. And anyone who's in, the, in that position and has someone uh, pull them into a room and go into an interview with them and, and a child who's gone through a very traumatic situation and they hear somebody say, this is a safe place you can share with us and it will not get out of this room mm -hmm. is a lie. They cannot guarantee that mm -hmm. because that happened here and nobody can stop that. No one could guarantee that. So, you know. So how are you going to get the truth if it... And even to this day, they've not the actors responsible have not been held accountable. Derek and Jill, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Derek, you may kiss the bride. A couple difficult topics in the book. You explore a lot of financial matter, mm -hmm. specifically as it pertains to the two of you being on reality TV for, especially you Jill, for mm -hmm. over a decade and not seeing the compensation that you felt mm -hmm. you deserved. So you talk about how the night before your wedding, you say that your dad presented you with a contract and asked you to sign something. So my dad set a contract in front of me and we outlined that in the book where 
he was like, oh, this is I, like asking because I only see a signature page. And I'm like, oh, I'm very trusting of my dad. So I'm like, oh, what is this? Oh, this is just about how you're going to get paid. And so I believe that, obviously. So it wasn't until years later when we get in this conflict with my parents about what we're obligated to and what we're not with the show. And then we're told like, no, Jill's obligated to this contract. And I'm like, what contract? Derek's like, you never signed anything, did you? And I'm like, no. And then we eventually hear like, no, there's this contract. And we see the date on the contract is like the day before our wedding. And at that point then is the realization happening for me. Wait a second, I remember that. That is not what happened. I had zero information, and of course him being an attorney now, mm -hmm. at the time, even though his brain was very wired that way, yeah. he's like, this is not valid. And I think yeah. it's important to realize that it's not just about being paid, because we knew, obviously, for years that we weren't being paid. We're not naive to that fact, but it was because uh, there was pressure for the obligation. Mm -hmm. and You're we not don't earning make it, anything from the reality show. We don't earn anything show. from the reality show, and Didn't so it is a practical matter. did you think that was strange, though, that you had donated, donated 12 years of your life to television and you never saw a dime of that? Yes, but I was also very conditioned. That's like one of the things about it. Like you're conditioned to think, oh, well, you know, this is just It's a ministry, it it's, it's an a obligation. It's a ministry. It's, right. You yeah. thought you were just sharing how you live with the world and showing the world. I knew that, that there family. was money being made like that because Obviously, like my family's lifestyle had changed over the years and evolved. You ultimately reached a settlement with your father. Yeah. Do you feel that that's fair? Or do you think you're owed no, quite I mean, a bit more? No, we were more? trying to put like a good foot forward. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't get it in the moment, we're just like, we're not greedy. We're just saying, this is what you reported on taxes that I earned. So well, this is what is like, I should be allowed to recover because it was mm -hmm. reported on my taxes that I never received. And I think another factor is sons and daughters are treated very differently in this culture. And mm -hmm. with Jill being a daughter, it was very different than whenever uh, some of her brothers got to the point that we were at years before. I really hope that things get better and not worse. Like I don't have any like ill intent like for my family. I love no. my family, mm -hmm. but we, had to, we do have to have like some boundaries in of place course. and stuff. But I hope that things get better as a result of like what we've been through. Okay, so you say no ill will, but I am curious if you harbor any sort of resentment towards your father. Yeah, I would say like my, um, my relationship with my father, there were very hurtful things that happened and I've chosen to forgive him and to hopefully move on with better boundaries and better rules in place, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. So that hopefully that level of control and um, hurt won't be allowed to happen again. Yeah. Because I feel like I didn't have very good boundaries. I didn't know what that could look like. And um, yeah. now through, thank God, like through therapy and mm -hmm. everything, I've kind of, of course it's a continual process of learning and, and enforcing those boundaries, but. Yeah. Tr trust and forgiveness <laughs> are two very different things. They are. And you can forgive somebody and not act the same around them. How would you describe your relationship with your dad today? Yeah, so things have not changed entirely. I think there's more of an understanding of where we're at um, in our relationship on like both sides maybe. Like there's, and when I say understanding, more of like they know that we're serious about boundaries and they respect it maybe more out of fear right now than um, than like understanding in that deeper understanding of like we know like this makes sense why you're doing it it's more of like okay we get where y'all are with that or whatever okay. but my relationship with my dad on a daily basis it's like we don't have a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one contact at all right now but we see each other at maybe weddings or funerals, or occasionally if there's um, a family function that we might choose to go to. And this is a boundary that you, the two That's of you have put up. we've had to put right. in you've place. Chosen. Yes. Yeah, just to keep things healthier. I'm very like emotionally swayed. Um, one, it's my family, and then also just like my personality. So Derek knows that about me. <laughs> and so he steps up for me when I'm like venting about stuff. Oh, this text message or whatever. Um, I still communicate with my family on like a group text or whatever. Who's on that but, group text? Well, there's been a few. Like <laughs> some of my siblings have like left the group text and then there will be more created and like it's just, yeah. Why know. does someone leave the group text? Just for 
thing said. Inflammatory comments. Oh. Um, Not from us. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> well, for example, after Ginger's book came out and then after we announced our book, there was a text from my dad. He was just saying like to all the kids on the group, like, um, don't speak negatively about us, like speaking of my parents, don't speak negatively about us or else you'll be cut out of the inheritance. Okay, so when was the last time maybe you saw your mom and your dad? It was like a few months ago, Ginger came to town and all the girls got together for like brunch. Well, my dad showed up. He like, showed up to, to girls brunch? Shocked in to say hey. How did you feel seeing your dad there? I knew that like there's any time I choose to go and hang out or whatever, I know that there's the possibility that I will bump into people or whatever. Yeah. I have to be prepared, yes. like myself, going into situations. Is it hugs or is oh, it? Oh yeah, like okay. he won't bring anything up when we're all together. It might be awkward. It's not like it used to be. Like yeah. used to, you would get pulled aside into a room and like, now, let me tell you, you know, behind like, closed doors. Yeah. But now there's, like I said, like there's like this respect of our boundary where it would not fly. Like we would pick up and leave like if there were something that came up. How are things with you and your mom? Do you ever resent that she stood by him during all these really difficult trials in your life? I, growing up in the group that I did and just my own story, I can see how there are, like some of the ways that my mom might have behaved in certain situations it makes sense to me um, why things were handled that way. Because that was her teaching. Yeah, and, and just like, you're in this predicament, you know? Um, so I try and keep my mom out of the middle of it. Now, at first I, I think she kind of felt like she had to fit in the middle and work things out or whatever. But as we've processed and really lived our story um, more, I felt like it kind of relieves her of that pressure and doesn't make her have to be the go-between between like me and my dad or whatever. If she can just be mom or be grandma. Yeah. So you have a very separate relationship with your mom. It is very separate. from your dad. Okay. I try to keep it that way because I think it's healthier right yeah. now. I think it's happier. <laughs> Thank you.